Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's Tomas sharing all my thoughts on fashion, lifestyle, and anything else that comes to mind. I feel like I definitely said that and there's food in my teeth because I've been snacking. I just got into the house. Okay, guys, the Loewe scarf is a must-have. I mean, it's March and it's pretty cold out. I think it's going to be like negative 10 tonight. But absolutely, the Loewe scarf is a huge winner. I'm actually kind of happy that maybe it's a little colder because I get to wear it some more before it's like summer and I have to put it away. You know what time it is. It is coffee chats with Tamas time. I saw something on Instagram that I needed to discuss with you. I was actually going to do this video this week anyways. So this kind of like ties into it, which is actually like perfect timing. I'm a little annoyed today because I had to go to Sephora and I spent $70 on my pickups, which is a little bit annoying. Small crisis, Innisfree discontinued my moisturizer, so I just got the new one, green tea hyaluronic cream. So I'm gonna try it out, but I really did like the other one. It was like the Volcano Cluster. I really liked it because it was light on my skin, um, but I'm really excited to try this on. It kind of looks like the La Mer packaging, which is like kind of cool, but yeah, this is heavy. I feel like the other one was like plastic. And then I went to The Ordinary and just pick up my hyaluronic acid. I'm actually really freaking annoyed. I had this in my bathroom and I like dropped it and it freaking shattered. Only this far completed. So I'm freaking annoyed about that because this is like 20 bucks, you guys. Innisfree and The Ordinary used to be cheap and I literally spent $70 for both these items. Anyways, guys, let's get into today's topic. Hermes. Now, later in the video, I'm gonna show you my top favorite handbags in the market right now. But we need to discuss this Hermes fiasco First, I saw on Instagram today that two shoppers, mystery shoppers or whatever, have filed a class action lawsuit against Hermes for the practice of them getting you to buy more stuff so that they'll give you a Birkin or Constance or a quota bag. When I saw this, I had many, many thoughts. One thing about me, I'm gonna keep it straight with you guys. I never lie. If I hate something, I'm gonna tell you I hate it. If I love something, I'm gonna tell you that I love it. Personally, I have not been a huge fan of Hermes lately. I actually find the brand to be quite corny and a little bit like chasery like it's not my vibe like however one thing about me if they offer me a birkin or a constance or a ruli that's actually my favorite hermes bag um i will say yes because the rise of tiktok it's become much more popularized you know you see these tiktok vlogs of people being like come with me to try my luck at hermes so i feel like hermes has definitely lost its exclusivity now that social media and vlogging has become more popular i'm an og youtube consumer and back then you know, used to watch the Jerushas, the Cassies, the kind of Mel and Melbournes going to the mall and like vlogging on their phones and saying like, oh, I'm here to see my essay at Hermes to like get offered a bag or whatever. Even then they weren't filming them getting the bag. I've noticed on TikTok, a lot of vloggers are now like literally filming themselves in the like private room where they offer you the Birkin. Filming the essay, taking the bag out of the box, which I find a little bit insane that Hermes is even allowing that. I think Hermes right now is not very happy with the social media and the way that it's affected its own brand. It's definitely lost a lot of exclusivity. Whereas 10 years ago, it was only really the luxury girlies that were like interested, that would read magazines, you know? The art of the fashion magazine is completely dead because it was those girls that were really interested in fashion who, you know, would go into the boutiques and like shop around, like, but now fashion is for everybody, which I personally think that Hermes hates. I can be sure that the two people that filed a class action lawsuit are 100% Hermes chasers. What do I mean by Hermes chasers? I mean like people that are like actively texting their essay or going to the stores and buying Hermes bait and buying Kelly bait. It's basically when you go in and play the Hermes game, aka buying stuff that you don't need or that you don't like in hopes that in the future they will offer you a Birkin or Kelly or Constance or whatever. Personally for me, if you guys watched last week's video, you know that I'm a ready to wear guy. I love clothing. If I enter a store, the first thing I'm looking at is clothing, not bags or shoes. If you want me to buy Hermes ready to wear so you can offer me a freaking Birkin, it's game over because I'd rather go to cost. It looks the same and it's like 80% cheaper. I can guarantee you that these people that file these lawsuits are 100% playing the Hermes game. They follow Hermes inspired accounts on Instagram. You know, people that post purple like alligator slides bought in Dubai. You know what I mean? Like those like Instagram accounts and they have their essay and they text each other. Oh, like, oh, Stephanie down the street got a purple Kelly. Why haven't I gotten one? Because I've heard that's how it goes down in these little Hermes groups in like small cities, especially where I live, where if Kelly got their purple Birkin down the street, everybody knows about it. And like, they keep tally. They keep tabs on people who like get bags. You know, there's two sides to every story. And personally, I think like, Hermes obsessed people do get very, very, very passionate about this brand. And I think sometimes they need to come down to earth Come have lunch with the normies, have lunch with us, and really like find something else to like 
be interested in because at this point, like if we're filing class action lawsuits and you're upset with the way that Hermes is running their game, which is completely up to them. Let's be honest, Laura Piata is actually trying to go this route as well, where they are limiting how many people can buy the L19 or their bags. I know from experience from my friends that are trying to get an L19 that they have been on the wait list for three months. They have the bag in store. They literally have it on this way, but they will not sell it to you because they only want 12 or 15 L19s to be sold that month. I just think Hermes is the most popularized and the most known to be doing this tactic of, you know, buying other stuff to be offered the really good stuff. It's not anything new. Hermes have been doing this for ages. The only reason everybody knows about it now is because of social media. I think if you have money to file a class action lawsuit, you probably have money to just buy the Birkin that you want, like the exact specs, the exact color, leather, hardware. You definitely have the money to just go buy it resell, or you can keep playing the Hermes game, or you can fly to Paris once a year and try and get a leather appointment and get it that way. I just had to talk about this because I found it really interesting, and I think people need to be more realistic and be more assertive of where they shop. And if you don't like the game, then don't play it. And if you want the product and you don't want to play the game, then you need to find another solution, which is buying it resell. That was my coffee chats with Tomas. Let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think of this whole Hermes drama? I saw this on Instagram today and I just found it like super interesting to talk about. So I had to share that with you guys. And now leading into the actual video idea, which I actually had written for today, which is funny because this kind of all came together. Um, I'm going to show you my top favorite designer handbags in the market right now because you know I'm not an Hermes lover. So I'm going to show you my favorites and hopefully that'll inspire you to maybe shop somewhere else. Okay, now on to the next part of the video. Um, we need to talk about the hair, you guys, because I'm not even kidding. I got this cut this week and I literally went into the bathroom of my work and started crying because I thought it looked so terrible. So can you guys let me know, like, what do we think of the hair? I feel like every angle hits me and I'm like, whoa, because like, if I look at it from head on, I'm like, okay, this looks fine. But then like, I'll catch it from the side and I'm like, I literally look like Coconut Head from Nesta Classified. So let me know. It's been, it's been a week, you guys, from like the first part of the video to this. Um, I feel like I'm low-key having a mental breakdown, but like, I feel like we should be okay. I don't know. Let me know what you think. I don't know. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Whatever. It's just like, it might be one of those things where it just takes like a lot of time to get used to it. But um, let's get into the second part of the video. Also, obsessed with my morning slides. I've been like wearing them more often because now it's not that cold. It is almost April, so hopefully you can like hurry up so I can show you guys some of my summer outfits. Let me know if you guys want like a summer lookbook and I can do that for you guys. I'm super excited for it to get like a little bit warmer, so. Into the second part of the video, which is some of my favorite handbags on the luxury market right now. I'm gonna be showing you a few of my favorite styles that I'm loving right now that I would totally purchase myself. So hopefully you know with this whole Hermes debacle, you can kind of discover new handbag styles that might fit for you and that you might fall in love with. Starting with my absolute favorite one is the Etro Vela bag. I absolutely have been obsessed with this bag and like I wish I did YouTube earlier because like I've been talking about this bag since last summer. I actually went to London. Maybe I can fit a video of it. I went to London last summer and I actually went into Etro and like tried it on and I was like so, so obsessed with this bag, you guys. I just love how like modern but still very like classic Italian heritage vibe that this bag has. I love how it kind of looks like a dumpling and like you open it, it has beautiful gold hardware on the top. It's so structured but still really like feminine and just very like cool. I find it a little bit hard to describe why I love this bag so much but I just think it looks so cool on everybody, men and women. They've actually been trying to make this bag like a thing for like so long. They do so many activations with it. Actually this week they actually did another one for the summer. So I definitely see Etro really making this like a, a stamp of approval for the brand. I think like if I go to Paris this summer, I would definitely get it with the tax refund because it is a little bit pricey, but I it's just, I have been obsessed with this bag for like over a year. So I feel like if I'm still talking about it now, I feel like I should definitely go get it. I've talked about Etro in my runway review for fall 2024 video, if you haven't seen that. And I just find Etro to be such like an underrated, super cool, if you know, you know brand and you know that I love like exclusive, cool stuff. So like that's why I personally love Etro. Next, let's move into Celine. So Celine has some really cool handbags out right now. One of them would be the Romy in the soft leather. I absolutely love this bag because I feel like it gives like Parisian daily like vibe on my way to the coffee shop and like I don't care. It's just like I threw on jeans and a t-shirt 
and I'm gonna throw on this bag. And I think this bag looked really cool, especially on guys. I've been seeing it on guys a lot. I cannot get over it. I just literally am obsessed with this bag. I feel like Celine does really, really great leathers right now. And Celine used to be a, like a little bit lower priced, but now that they're becoming more popular, I feel like the bags have definitely gone up in price. I recommend for Celine to look on Bestier because a lot of the handbag styles aren't very viral. You can actually find them on Bestier. Good quality and like honestly like 40 to like 60% off the retail price. So if you want a Celine bag, would I recommend to go into the boutique? Unless you've got it like that, then like sure, go ahead. But if you're trying to save some money, I actually really recommend looking on Vestier because you will find like, especially the 16 bag that has never really like popped off. I love that bag as well. I found a 16 bag on Vestier, I'm not even kidding guys, for $1,400. Did I buy it? No, but still, like, you know what I mean? Like a lot of these handbags have literally zero to like none resale value. I feel like only like Dior, and Chanel and Hermes have resale value now, like not even Gucci, not even Prada. So honestly, if you're looking for a bag and you don't really care about the color or the size, look on Vestier because I'm sure someone is 100% selling it for like 50% less. The other selling bag that I love is the Tilly bag. Percy for me, because I feel like I'm like a little bit taller and I do have wider shoulders, I would never wear like a shoulder bag, but I love this bag. I love how like dainty and girly and feminine it looks, especially with the huge Triumph logo on the front. I love it. It reminds me of the Prada Clio bag, but in like a more Parisian, cooler way, which I like. I've seen Lisa from Blackpink wearing this bag. I've seen a lot of other few celebrities and like public figures wearing this bag. And I think it looks really cool. Like it kind of gives me like music festival, you know, like I'm wearing like cutoff shorts, like a tank or like a camisole. And then I throw this bag on to go to like Coachella or Lollapalooza. And I love that look. I love that vibe. And it's such a good bag to me. I feel like Celine is kind of like killing it in the game right now. I know I'm like such like a fan of Celine and I really wish it wasn't so expensive because I would Literally, if I had the money, I'd be shopping there, like, all the time. But, yeah, their handbags out right now are really, really, really cool. Other than Triumph canvas styles, they actually do make a lot of handbags. So, I recommend just going through the website and, like, looking because you would be surprised that they have, like, really cool handbag styles out right now. Okay, next we have the Givenchy Voyou bag. This is kind of a similar look to the Etro Bella bag where it's, like, a big... Kind of just like throw on the shoulder and go out of the house vibe. I love this bag. The only thing that I don't like about it is that the opening is very, very like loose. Like you can't close it. I feel like with the extra one, like it actually clasps with the gold hardware. The Givenchy is basically just like a tote. Might as well be one of those Trader Joe's like tote bags because this bag just does not close. So I feel like if you're traveling or you're like going to like Italy or Paris and you, you're a little afraid of people pickpocketing you, this would be the perfect bag to get pickpocketed in because the inside of it is so easy to get into. Only thing is now the bag has gone up a little bit considerably and I don't think that I would pay like 3300 3400 for a Givenchy bag. To me, Givenchy is kind of like a, it's not really an aspirational brand for me and not something that I wanna be repping a lot, even though I did actually like Matthew Williams' work. Let me know what you guys think about this like feeling that I have, but like Matthew Williams obviously did the Voyou bag and now that it's like kind of viral, especially in Asia, a lot of people are wearing it. But now that Matthew Williams doesn't work there anymore, it kind of makes me like not wanna get the bag because I feel like eventually they're just gonna discontinue it because like, the new creative director is just gonna take Givenchy in like another direction. So like, why would I buy the bag now? Because I feel like it's, when I feel like it's gonna be like discontinued. I don't know, what do you guys think? Is that me just like reading too much into it? Being like, okay, if you like the bag, just buy it because you like the bag. Not because there's some kind of like social status to it, but let me know what you guys think. I feel like that's how I'm feeling right now. I was looking on Best Year like a few weeks ago for the Voyou bag and I literally saw some for like $1,100. And it retails for like 33. So like, I definitely think that this bag is zero resale value. So I would look for it on sale or just like on like resale sites. The last one would be Delvo bags. Obviously, if you're like that pretentious kind of Hermes exclusivity client that you like just want bags that like nobody else has, I would take a look at Delvo. I mean, Delvo is pretty well known now, I feel like, especially with social media. Apparently, Delvo leather is actually matching to the Hermes leather, so apparently they use the same leather. Delvo is a little bit easier to get. It's a little bit more mature, but I feel like if you wear it in a cool way, like especially the pin bag, again, these, these bags are all just kind of the same, like the Voyou and the Etro. That kind of like huge bag that you just throw on and go. I really love that. And I feel like their leather is actually very, very, very high quality. I remember when I went to New York when Bar News was closing. They had a few and I feel like I should have just picked one up there. I felt the leather and I tried it on. And you guys, the leather is actually really freaking good. Like I have to admit. Like I feel like, I don't know, have I ever felt a Nermes bag? I don't think I've ever, yes I have. 
a touch of your mess bags and like I'm not like a leather expert but it did feel to me like the leather was very like close to being the same I think if you want something that's a little bit more pretentious a little bit more exclusive more mature and you kind of like the history of Belgium then I would definitely take a look at Delvo Okay guys, that was a quick little kind of spiel about my favorite bags. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys like any of these bags or if you have them. Let me know your thoughts. And please let me know about the haircut. We are still not convinced, but thank you so much for watching, you guys. I really appreciate it. I know like last week I had a video about the Hermes bag on shorts and you guys really love that. So I'm very grateful that you guys are sticking around to my channel and I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Let me know what you guys want to see. Maybe if it's warm next week for the next week's video, I can do like a summer or spring lookbook inspo for you guys. But let me know what you want to see and make sure you guys are liking and subscribing. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.